Hello, I'm Terry Rhodes, Vice President for Quality Curriculum and Assessment. Welcome to AACNU's Next Generation Assessment Series on Assessing Student Learning and Institutional Effectiveness. Today, hosts Tammy Cumming and David Miller speak with Jenny Bergeron on summative assessments in a virtual teaching and learning environment. Hi, this is Web Bytes, and today we're going to be talking about assessment for online learning. And uh, I am one of your co-hosts. I'm David Miller from the University of Florida, where I am the director of the School of Human Development and Organizational Studies and Education. Hi, I'm Tammy Cumming. I'm the Assistant Vice President and Associate Provost for Institutional Effectiveness at Brooklyn College of the City University in New York. And I'm also serving as co-host today. And I'm super excited to welcome Dr. Jennifer Bergeron from Harvard University. Hi, I'm Jenny. I'm the Director of Educational Research and Evaluation in the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, as Tammy mentioned, at Harvard. So today, we have a couple of questions for you. Uh, the first question that we're going to ask for you today is about what the relationship is between summative assessment and alignment, which we all know is a very important topic to the validity of assessments. Uh, the second question we'll be asking you about is uh, what are some of the major differences or changes that we might expect to see in this alignment process as we've moved from face-to-face -face assessments to more online assessments? So I'd like to start today with you, Jenny, just uh, having you briefly outline sort of what is the relationship between summative assessment and alignment? Yes, of course. So summative assessment, as we all know, is assessment that we usually look at to measure the outcomes of a course or, or of a program. And when we think of this, it's important, as you mentioned, to think about alignment. And when we think about alignment, we can think of sort of the idea of backwards design. That, uh, when a faculty designs a course that they should start thinking about what a student should be able to do or demonstrate as a result of instruction. And then they develop their activities and instruction around those outcomes. And then when it comes time to develop assessments to ensure that students are actually being able to do or demonstrate um, the things that they learn in class, that they're actually also aligned with the outcomes and objectives for the course. So it's all, all important um, through the instruction, through the through the assessment piece and through the planning piece. Yeah, Jenny, that's really important, maintaining the validity um, with the assessments while um, keeping the original objectives. That's what we had to deal with uh, last semester with COVID-19. Now, moving forward, um, it's anticipated that a lot is still going to be online. So what sort of differences um, are you seeing? Do you expect Do you have advice regarding assessments and alignment for the face-to-face -face versus now this online uh, environment that we're all in? I, well, I think the good principles of assessment that we apply in brick and mortar classes are also important for what we do online as well. Uh, we can think about alignment in the same way. Uh, we can also think about the different uh, metrics that we can use to evaluate performance. Um, I think a lot of a common metric that a lot of people rely on is simply the multiple choice test. And I'm not saying that these are not good instruments, but they need to be carefully designed. But I think a lot of people, when they're thinking of online, that they, they fall back on um, these more traditional measures. Um, of course, we want to think about how, um, how people test is actually how students will learn. So if we're wanting students to learn at sort of these higher level of, of, of the higher levels of the cognitive taxonomy, we want to develop assessments that are measuring these things. We can think about performance assessments, um, activities and assignments that will uh, get at some of these higher order things. The other thing I think people think about when they're talking about online, they also talk about test security. Um, one of the things we have to be careful about is um, when we're thinking about test security and uh, we want to also think about how we're testing. And uh, again, if you're using some of these higher uh, uh, order cognitive tasks for your assessments, I think it's a lot more difficult for students to uh, be, uh, uh, be, uh, you know, dishonest. It's, 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 it, you know, it prevents cheating when you're asking them to do these higher order tasks, as opposed to, you know, the simple multiple choice exam. I think the third thing that we really want to think about when we're designing uh, instruments online or assessments for online is the issue of validity. Um, and when we think about validity, we want to think about things that go into test scores that not necessarily are related to what we're measuring, but things that are irrelevant. 
So one of the things that I, I like to think about are, are students familiar enough with what's going online? Do they know how to use the tools, right? Or is something else getting in the way of actually us being able to reflect what they're able to do or, or to know? And one of the biggest things that we're facing now with online is the issue of access. Not everybody having the same access to, um, the, to the tools they need to be able to learn. So I think that um, when we're building and we're constructing assessments that we really need to keep all these things in mind and just remember simply the same things that apply to building good assessments in brick and mortar classes also apply to what we can do online. Thank you, Jenny. That was a very interesting discussion. I think that this issue, of course, of alignment and, and with the changes in the forms of assessment is still very critical to all the work that we're trying to do in assessment. And, and it's good that, to think about the idea that, as you've said, that when we move for, to the online environment, that the uh, alignment is still as important as it's ever been. It's just that now we're going to have to be thinking about new issues, as you talked about, the irrelevant variants, perhaps due to the new forms that we might have to do the assessment in, the response process, uh, some of the things that are not just the content. I mean, content will still be there, but I think as we develop new and different methods of assessment, it's very important to think about uh, uh, how that affects the actual alignment process as, as we go through this. So thank you for sharing for, with us today. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thanks.